Again, the flash you saw there was from the strobe lights being used here. Kevin McHale, Brewer on the follow. Randy Brewer, who had six points in the first half. He is 7-2 a freshman. A local product of Minnesota from Lake City, and it's now 46-41, Minnesota hit by five. Drake Morris. And Holden. Minnesota with that tough defense. Clears it out. Fast break, two on one. Great play by Scaris breaking it up. But he might have gone out of bounds. Or Drake Morris, rather, but he might have gone out of bounds. Drake Morris really got down in a hurry. Block shot there, the fast break. Lost the handle to begin with. Now we've got a timeout, 11 and a half minutes to play. Minnesota by five. Meet the family of high mileage 1980 Mercuries. Zephyr, Bobcat, Capri. Come on in. He's on down, he's on down the road. He's on down with the high mileage ratings of Mercury Bobcat, one of America's lowest sticker prices. Zephyr, great mileage ratings with a lot of room for the money. Or Capri, mileage with a sexy European look. He's on down, he's on down the road. Meet the high mileage Mercuries at the sign of the cat. During RCA's Instant Savings Days, the instant you buy an RCA color track, the price gets smaller. As much as $100. Just buy any 1980 color track from table models to consoles. Depending on the model you buy, RCA will reduce the price 30 50 or up to $100 instantly. So see your participating RCA dealer now and get instant savings on an RCA color track. A great weekend of basketball continues later today as the Fighting Irish battle the Bruins. And tomorrow, the LSU Fighting Tigers face the Blue Demons of DePaul, all on NBC. Kick off your Sunday with NBC. Tomorrow, starting at 12.30 Eastern Time, Sports World reviews the ups and downs of the 79 end of all season. Following Sports World at 1.30 Eastern Time, Duran Macklin leads the explosive LSU Tigers against sens sensational sophomore Mark Aguirre and Ray Myers' powerful number one ranked DePaul Blue Demons. That's tomorrow on NBC. 11.29 to play. Minnesota on the inbounds, coming into Tucker. The news back man. And Brewer is picked up by Brian Walker. Walker's first foul. That's three fouls in a row they've called on Purdue. Randy Brewer, number 45. He should really be something. Another Kevin oh. McHale on the way. Both these teams had to rebuild, and both coaches did an excellent job of doing it this year. Holmes. The thing I like about Randy Brewer, he's not afraid to go to the basket with it, and he can run pretty well. Tucker to Hall, driving left side. Mark Hall has hit three driving layups from the left side of this half. 48-41 Minnesota by seven. Kevin Stallings is getting ready to check in for Purdue as the Boilermakers face the Minnesota zone. Edmondson over the top of it, it won't go down. Randy Brewer clears it out, fast break, two on one now, and Hall takes the shot and goes down. Eight points for Hall in this half as Minnesota goes back to a nine-point lead. They're beating him down the floor in the conversion. And this and crowd of 16,000 cuts loose. And Lee Rose commented on the crowd here yesterday. He said it's a tough crowd. They really make it noisy. Joe Barry Carroll is hitting. And a foul away from the ball. Let's see if the basket counts. The foul was on Mark Hall. Basket is good. Joe Barry with two field goals in this half, 13 points for the game. And a foul on Mark Hall, his second of the game. Now 16 fouls against... Minnesota in this half, and Joe Barry Carroll is on the line. All American, Carroll. He's all everything. So is Kevin McHale. What a, you know, you're looking at two of the really greats in collegiate basketball on this floor today, and Kevin McHale and Joe Barry Carroll. 50-44, Minnesota. 
Walker overshot Holmes. Good defensive effort by number 33, Drake Morris, though. And now we're getting a complaint from uh, from Trent Tucker. He says that uh, he was fouled by Drake Morris. No, I think he, he thought that uh, Drake Morris had tipped the ball when he threw it, but uh, he had the ball out in one hand, which probably wasn't a very good thing to, to do anyway against pressure. Stallings 32 to Drake Morris. Morris, an 18-footer, off the heel. Holmes rebounds for Minnesota. 9.49 to play in the game. Look at Hall move again. Ball deflected. And... They let him go for a while. See if they can get it out of there oh, cleanly. No. Or do we calling, have a foul? Calling traveling. Uh-oh. I believe Jim Dutcher has been hit with a technical. And that's unusual for Jim Dutcher, too. Well, Jim Dutcher, you talk about, you, you look at Lee Rose, you say a soft-spoken Lee Rose. You look at Jim Dutcher, soft-spoken Jim Dutcher. But they can both get their dander up. Well, I'd say, I think this, Merle, about coaches getting excited. A little. You know, if, if a coaches and players don't have more at stake than who does. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, Fred, you look at Jim Dutcher, and I'll bet you remember when you were in that same situation, huh? Did you get a few? Now, come on. Yeah, I, I freely admit that. <laughs> and, you know, I, uh, I go right back to my original statement. you got to get your head in the game once in a while. Drake Morris... That's two shots on the technical on the bench, by the way, as I'm sure you're aware. So, put two down in the column for Drake Morris. 50, 46, four-point lead, Minnesota. Purdue will have the ball. They can close to within two for the field goal. Minnesota will be content with his own. Carroll comes high, drops back low, and McHale inherits him. He's got Brewer to worry about, and Stallings from the outside, and Brewer rebounds. Three on one, Minnesota. Again, the fast break. Hall stops it. What a half he's had. Ten points for Hall of this half. They got caught in a fast break again. We have not seen Minnesota run that well in a long time, Merle. 52-46, Minnesota. And the crowd really cuts it loose. That's Holman short of the mark. Rebounded out of there by Holmes. And Holmes clears it over to Trent Tucker. A lot of people talk about the stuff turning people on, but I think a fast break, a well-run fast break, is much more exciting. Kevin McHale works with Brewer, and he is fouled by Holman. As McHale is fouled by Holman. Arnett's first foul of the game. Kevin McHale pump fakes here. Arnett Hellman comes right down on him. And he felt that one. 16 fouls, Minnesota. Five team fouls, Purdue, in this half. 8.48 to play. And the Gophers will play it in. And Jim Dutcher says, hey. Inbound pass comes into Tucker. Hall. Hall from the outside, a little bit short, and Drake Morris comes up with the rebound for Purdue. This is Kevin Stallings who will bring it up, and Lee Rose says, let's talk about it, guys. And a timeout is called for the Boilermakers. With eight minutes, 24 seconds to play, Minnesota ahead by six. If women shaved men's faces, we'd try to shave them a lot closer than men do, because we know all about skin and Nagzima. Trust me. The closer you shave, the more you need the medicated comfort of Maxima Shave Cream. Take it off. And what have you got? Skin smooth enough to get next to mine. Maxima. On Saturday afternoons, for 40 years, millions of Americans have enjoyed something very special. The Metropolitan Opera, broadcast live on radio by Texaco. We've 
been proud to bring you these broadcasts, helping make the Metropolitan America's only national opera company. Texaco, your ticket to the opera for 40 years. Hi, I'm Johnny Orr, the head basketball coach at Michigan, and I hope you'll tune in next week when we go to Evanston and play the Northwestern Wildcats. It should be a dandy. Johnny Orr, a good old Southern Illinois boy, will lead his Michigan Wolverines against Northwestern next Saturday afternoon at 3.30 Eastern time. We'll be there to cover the action for you. Rich Falk has those Wildcats going. They're 6-8 and eight this year. Purdue trailing uh, Minnesota by 6 as Purdue will have the ball after calling a timeout to talk it over. I'm sure they're talking over the kind of strategy they want to use on offense. They've got uh, Kevin Stallings in the ball game now. One of their good shooters. See if they can't destroy the zone. And you're looking at the zone right there. Rick Morris, Stallings, loops it to Carroll. He got the alley open. Carroll got her down. That's seven for Carroll. This happened 16 of the game for Joe Barry. 52-48, Minnesota. Hall uh, gets it to McHale. He missed the layup. And he lost the ball out of bounds, Purdue. Uh, that's a basket you have to have. You, you can't lollygag that one up there. Looked like he couldn't make up his mind with it. A stumper to just drop it over. Well, uh, Joe Barry was coming at him too, but uh, you got to take a chance on that one. Joe Barry can be a distraction. Stallings looks from the outside, looks for Carroll. He's double teamed. Right now they got Brewer and McHale both on uh, Joe Barry. Talk about a problem. Joe Barry gets it up there anyway, hits the heel, and Brewer rebounds it out. And here come the Golden Gophers. And coming up across the line, Trent Tucker. We'll pause five seconds for a station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WMAQ-TV, Chicago. Merle Herman and Fred Taylor with you as Tucker goes down on a foul. And the foul is on Edmondson. That'll be his third. And we've got a timeout with 7.21 to go. 52-48, Minnesota. How do you spell relief? When I get acid indigestion, I spell relief, R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. Clinical tests prove with Rolaids you get relief Tums can't beat. That's right, relief Tums can't beat. In fact, relief no other leading antacid can beat. How do you spell relief? For heartburn? I know. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Relief no other leading antacid can beat. Cougar, more than ever. Meet the completely new Cougar XR7s. Completely new in their lean, fluid design. Completely new in sophisticated, available technology. Completely new in fuel efficiency with an optional automatic overdrive transmission. No other American automaker offers it. The completely new Cougar XR7s. Cougar, more than ever. The Big Ten swimming meet could be one of the most competitive in the last 20 years. Surprising Iowa is still unbeaten and has already defeated perennial power Indiana. Should be quite a meet at Michigan next month. The preceding message was furnished by TBS on behalf of the Big Ten Conference. 67% from the field for Minnesota. 41% from Purdue. There's the score and we have 721 left to play in the game. 61%. You'd take that, wouldn't you, coach? Any day. Twice on Saturdays. Mm. I am amazed, I guess, Fred, at the quickness, the speed of Minnesota. As you mentioned earlier, they have not had that in recent years. And um, they're still big. I'll say they are. I think it's uh, one of the things that has helped that, Merle, is people are playing basketball year-round now. It's not a seasonal thing. They're not playing other sports nearly as much as they used to, and they do nothing but get better. Tucker had been fouled by Edmondson before we went away. Missed the first one and converts the second. 53-48 Minnesota, 7.21 to play. Pressure by Minnesota and Purdue having problems. Mike Scarris is in the game now. Brings it down, clears it to Edmondson. To Scarris and they get it across and just barely. So Minnesota's used a variety of defenses today and now they drop back into the zone. Watch out, watch out. In fact, both teams have used 
the switching defense, man-to-man -man and zone. Joe Barry Carroll oh. over the top of Brewer, and Brewer is fouling, I believe. Here's a pass in. Watch Joe Barry make a turn. And number 30 reaches in, Mitchell. But Joe Barry got Randy Brewer off his back in a hurry. So Joe Barry, Carroll for two shots. That's eight points and a half and 17 for the game. For Joe Barry, averaging 24.9. Holds the Purdue record for rebound. Mr. Everything in basketball for the Boilermakers. Two out of two, 18 points. 53-50 Minnesota, seven minutes to play. Inbounds, taken by Hall. Again, the Gophers move quickly, three on two. Tucker will have to come back to the top. Stalling staying right with him. Mark Hall. Mitchell. It works. Mitchell got loose. Good backside cut. And Minnesota was hurting because it was about to be a jump ball. 55-50 Gophers. Carroll. Brewer is playing him tough. Stallings, Edmondson, Scarce. And Carroll gets it on the rebound. 20 points for Joe Barry Carroll. Minnesota zone was back clear inside the yellow. All five people were in there. Give you an idea just how much they've compacted that thing. Hall to Mitchell. 55-52, Minnesota by three. Five minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the game. Tucker. Got it in. 15 points for Trent Tucker. 57-52. That's a big basket. Good individual effort. Good move. Back to the other end. Joe Barry Carroll has done a super job here in the second half. He's at it again and won't go down. Look at Joe Berry go for the rebound, comes up with it, and we've got a foul. Traveling call, no foul. Traveling call as Carroll traveled the ball. Joe Berry didn't back up any, neither did the freshman Randy Brewer. There's a couple of men going at each other in there then. You know, you're a Joe Berry Carroll, and you think yeah. you're going to play against yeah. Kevin McHale, which you do, but all yeah. of a sudden a Randy Brewer right. shows up. You bet you. And now you got to take them both on. There's the score, the time left to play, 5-12. Minnesota's ball, Purdue pressing. It's a little bit tougher, too, when you're a Joe Barry Carroll, and you've spent four years in the league and everybody taking a pop at you. Now you say, where'd this new guy come from? Mitchell, Trent Tucker on the baseline, brings it back to the top, being chased by Edmondson. Mitchell, Paul, underneath, and no shot available. Tucker brings it back to the front, and Minnesota's working the clock a bit now. 5.45 to go in the game. That's a cool move by a freshman right there. They're very content, but Hall takes the shot. Mitchell goes for the rebound and throws it out. Big rebound there for oh, Jim Dutcher. Oh, what a rebound. What a rebound. Because I'm sure Dutch would have been happy if the shot had not been taken, but Mitchell got it back for him anyway. They're working on the clock. 4.15 to go in the game. 57-52. Minnesota ahead by five. Oh. Purdue had cut it back to three after going down by nine in this half. And Jim Dutcher might be a mild-mannered guy, but he's a little intent right now, too, as you look at him on the sideline. Ball knocked away by Brian Walker. Burrow right now is, is a tough part of a ball game. If Minnesota plays with the ball like they did, run time off the clock as they did and then they don't score then it really hurts okay about two minutes ago we saw Hall come down a trucker come down rather and bang one and he really banged it and you called it a big basket at that time it looked like I mean I'm sure that you and I might have been thinking the same thing if he gets this this is going to be good for I mean enough for Jim Dutcher now he's going to take some time off the ball exactly ball. exactly uh, and, and we talked a little bit ago when uh, Kevin McHale passed the ball into Randy Brewer, a freshman. Now he's got a chance to work on Joe Barry Carroll, and he's penetrated into about seven feet from the basket. 
So he could go to work, but he wisely passed it back out because that's what apparently he was told to do. And, of course, Purdue coming back this year with an outstanding record, 11-3, 4-1 in the Big Ten. Not that far back, only down by five with plenty of time. At 1.30 Eastern time tomorrow, Duran Macklin leads the explosive LSU Tigers against super soft Mark Aguirre and Ray Myers to Paul Blue Demons, who are ranked number one of the nation. That's tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern time on NBC. 4.02 to play. Next Saturday afternoon, Fred and I will be at Evanston, Illinois for Michigan and Northwestern. Johnny Orr's Wolverines take on Rich Fox Wildcats at 3.30 Eastern time on NBC in association with TBS. Well, the Boilermakers, who were down 34-29 at halftime after closing the gap. They've been down by nine points twice in the first half. They've been down by nine in this half. They got back within three, turned the ball over once when they could have gotten within two, and they're still hanging in there. Well, this is a technical situation right here. Purdue can't afford to give up an easy basket on the out-of-bounds. Minnesota handling the ball. Go, 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 go. Holmes, Mitchell, Tucker could have lost it, but didn't. Three minutes, 44 seconds to play. Holmes, Carroll, a double team, and the ball was saved. Scarce apparently thought it was going out of bounds, and look at the scramble. The ball kicked around. They let him go. Hall gets loose, loops it, and it will go. A hook shot by Hall. Had to loop it over the big guys. And Hall has had a super second half after being shut out of the first half. 59-52 Minnesota. Edmondson. Joe Barry Carroll. Yes. Joe Barry Carroll comes up with another one. 22 points for the big guy. 59-54. Minnesota trying to beat Purdue down the court. Almost turned it over. They do turn it over. And then regain it. Turn it over. Brian Walker breaks. Has a solo. McHale blocks his shot. And he fouled him. And Walker comes up ailing. He landed on his right hand. Brian Walker in pain. He banged the elbow. You saw the tape on the little finger. That was a dislocation coming uh, on a play in the first half. And you talk about a guy hanging in. Here it is. There he goes right now. And Kevin McHale comes in from behind. Traps it against the board. But then bangs him right there. Three fouls on McHale. Coming in is Drake Morris. Going out will be Mike Scaris for Purdue. And Brian Walker with a right hand tape as we look at Drake Morris who just came in. Brian Walker has hit only 58% from the free throw line. And that tape on his right hand won't help any. And here comes his brother Steve Walker into the game as Edmondson goes out. Steve Walker, a senior from Lebanon, Indiana. So Brian is on the free throw line. He'll have two. Brian Walker. Well, you can bet it's going to be fast and furious now from Purdue on defense. 2.43 to play. Got it? It's his first point. He averages only 3.4 ball game, but he has another job. Handling the ball. Quarterbacking the team. Got them both. Tape didn't bother him. Three-point lead Minnesota. Gary Holmes front courts it. Brian Sam Walker is after him. Steve Walker, rather. And we get a foul called on Steve Walker. So Steve Walker commits the foul. And a one-on-one -on -one coming up for Trent Tucker, number seven. Right here, number 32, Trent Tucker drives it across the middle. Now watch him when he picks it up. And Steve Walker in the behind. It is 60 to 56 as Tucker goes up for his second shot. 